There's a famous econ joke. It goes like this. There's two economists. They're walking. One spots a $20 bill on the ground and says, hey, should we grab it? The other says, of course not. If it were really there, somebody would have gotten it already. And they keep walking. Yeah, I got about the same reaction when I told that joke in class. So they keep walking. They keep walking. <coughs> All right. So what's the idea of the joke? Well, economists believe that people follow incentives. So any obvious profit opportunity would already have been taken advantage of. That's why there can't be a $20 bill on the street. And there certainly can't be a $20 million bill on the street, can there? But first, why exactly shouldn't there be a $20 bill? Here's the theory. Say wheat costs $5 in town A and $10 in town B. You could buy in A, sell in B, and pocket $5 profit. This is arbitrage, exploiting price gaps. You may remember in the TV show Seinfeld, Kramer tried this with soda cans. There was a five cent deposit in New York, 10 cent in Michigan. 10 cents? Yeah. Wait a minute, you mean you get five cents here and 10 cents there? So he was taking soda from New York to Michigan. But here's the issue, you can't make that profit forever. Buying in the cheap town reduces supply, driving up prices there. Selling in the expensive town increases supply, driving down prices there. Repeat this and prices converge. Profit evaporates. This is the law of one price. After accounting for trade costs, taxes, and other frictions, identical goods should have the same price everywhere. In the Seinfeld example, New York and Michigan don't converge because the prices are set by government and Michigan makes it illegal to redeem out-of-state bottles. Leave a can in your cup holder as you cross into Michigan, and guess what? You, sir, are a scoundrel, a cheat, a smuggler. And yet, people still try, again and again. Because people follow incentives. They're hunting for the $20 bills. So about that $20 million bill just lying there, here's what happened. The Texas lottery rolls over if no one wins. In 2023, it rolled over enough times that the lump sum payment reached $60 million. Now lottery tickets cost a dollar, and there are roughly 26 million number combinations. So if you buy every combination, it costs 26 million. But you're guaranteed a win of 60 million, and you'll clear about 20 million after taxes. Free money. So why didn't everyone try this? Well, because it would be quite the operation. The tickets must be bought in person, over a tight three-day window. You need lottery machines then. You need to hire people to pump those machines for tickets. And oh yeah, don't forget about the 26 million you need just to start. So it's pretty impossible, except someone actually did do it. Here's our mastermind, the mad lad himself, Ade Rubcheko. He got some investors together. By the way, I'd love to see that pitch deck. Then, they call the Texas Lottery Commission, and according to the group, the conversation went something like this. Hey, we're just some friendly Europeans coming to Texas. Weird question. Can we pick up some lottery machines while we're there? What do you need them for? Oh, you know, just trying to buy every ticket and guarantee a win. Oh, okay, great idea. We'll rush those right over. With the machines in hand, Repcheco then hires a bunch of random people and possibly some children, to pump those machines for ticket after ticket. And they won. This then became a scandal, and the Lottery Commission has taken steps to close the loophole. So this $20 million bill is no longer on the ground, although actually maybe it still is because it may have happened again last month. So stay tuned or maybe move to Texas and get a PowerPoint presentation ready. Anyway, the broad lesson is, like that $20 bill on the street, someone will pick it up, and it pays to be first. And people have long known this. In the early 1800s, the Rothschild banking empire used a network of carrier pigeons to transmit financial news faster than anyone else in Europe. Allegedly, Nathan Rothschild received early word of Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo and made a fortune trading bonds with that info. Today, high frequency trading firms spend millions to build offices physically closer to Wall Street servers, moving just a few feet to shave microseconds off their trades. So yeah, it's great to be first. But here's the thing, you're probably not going to be first. I mean, are you a banker with a pigeon army to do your bidding? Do you have the technical skills to build a custom trading terminal? Do you have the name of a Bond villain and also the audacity to just call the Lottery Commission and say, oh, I'm thinking about rigging this, you wanna help? If so, more power to you. But chances are, you're not gonna be first. 99.999% of the ground on earth does not have a $20 bill on it. 
but there are rare, rare times when, for whatever reason, like an econ professor needing an ending for his video, there is actually a $20 bill on the ground. And in those cases, maybe you could be the first non-economist to walk by.